we are at a Choco State Wayside, and we are about to get rockin'. Rock, Oregon of the John Day Fossil Beds National Monument. Let me tell you, this has been a long time in the making. Welcome 2021. This is my first time I've been out in a year. In a year. Um, but uh, trying to pick somewhere to celebrate this momentous occasion wasn't easy. I had to pick and choose where I was going. And this area out here, the Sheep Rock Unit of John Day Fossil Beds, is an area that has piqued my interest for years, but I just haven't had a chance to really get out here because it's so far away. I mean, it's nowhere near anything. Um, <laughs> from Bend alone, you're talking three and a quarter, three and a half hours from Bend. Um, but the silence is absolutely impeccable. So. We arrived here, uh, it's about four o'clock right now. Uh, I chose to come out here because we have my favorite conditions for shooting landscape photography. We have a pale sun. Let me turn you around. You can see the sun back there. You can barely see it, kind of peeking through the clouds. But that's my favorite time to be shooting landscapes. And I'll tell you why a little bit later. We are now gonna head to my sunset spot called Sheep Rock. Um, Let's nail it. Oh, and welcome 2021. You know, I've been a photographer for over 20 years and it never gets old. You go around a curve or a bend in the road and you see something like that. I mean, that is just absolutely mind blowing. That whole banded palisaded cliffs. I mean, it doesn't even look real, man. It looks like, like in nature's artwork, untouched. And it's a little nasty right now with that light, but that leading line there, I mean, imagine though with that at sunrise tomorrow with that sky, pinky palooza. Dude, it, get, it doesn't get any better than that. So welcome to Sheep Rock, Oregon. Uh, like I said, is the Sheep Rock unit of John Day Fossil Beds National Monument. And uh, when you look at John Day on a map, he's kind of enigmatic. Um, Sheep Rock is just one section of the John Day uh, Fossil Beds National Monument. When you look at the park on a map, um, it looks, uh, <laughs> it looks uh, pretty piecemealed. Um, it's not like Crater Lake or Yosemite or Death Valley where it's a huge park, just one contiguous park. It's split into three tiny sections in a huge area of Central Oregon. Uh, you have the Sheep Rock Unit, which is where we're at right now. We have Clarino Unit, which is about two and a half hours that way. And you have the unit that everybody knows about, which is the Painted Hills. Uh, Sheep Rock kind of reminds me of the, uh, <laughs> he kind of reminds me of a redheaded stepchild that, uh, or the kid on the playground that you just don't talk to. <laughs> but when you get to talk to him, he's a pretty cool cat. <laughs> so that, that's kind of what Sheep Rock reminds me of. Um, I don't know if it's a hidden gem, but it's definitely an area worth exploring uh, once in your life, at least to, to come out here and admire the insane geology. Um, it's just absolutely mind-blowing, this geology. So we came out here because of weather conditions. Um, I call the pale sun paradigm. Um, 
This is a condition in the sky that every landscape shooter dreams of. And I'll tell you why. If you look right here, you can see my shadow on the sagebrush. That's fine, that's good, that's a good sign. Now if we go down here, you see the sun in the sky behind me? Very pale, like very foggy. And that's because, and that's because the sun is hiding behind a very thin, paper thin layer of clouds. And when light pops through, it will absolutely blow up these clouds. This condition I found in the high deserts is about 75, 70, 75% legit. P pretty accurate. When you have pale sun, get out to the high desert because it's probably going to explode. And that's what I'm hoping for tonight. In fact, the, I'm standing here and the sun keeps popping out. I see a really cool uh, rainbow, uh, sunbow, sunbow. That's another really good sign for a pale sun. So what we're gonna do is kinda hang out and, uh, until sunset and uh, check out some couple compositions we have. Um, and let's get to it. So here's kinda what I'm looking at is one composition here. Um, I have a 17 to 35 lens on today. Um, and I can't get in very close, but there's a wide, there's my 35. But you can see this kind of S curve in the river here. It kind of goes out like that. And then of course there's Sheep Rock, there's our anchor, and there's our good boy there. But I like this menagerie of sagebrush and colors right here and then the red of the, of the willows. Um, that could work. A little busy, but it could work if I simplify it. But look at the sky. You see that blue band there? And then you have the little white ribbons hanging out. That's a pale sun. something not mind-blowing or, or spectacularly awesome you know I'm happy just to get the hell out you know I mean really Nature, nature never ceases to amaze me, ever. I mean, look at that S-curve right there. I mean, you can't get a sexier looking S-curve in a river. That, that's probably one of the most perfect S-curves I've ever seen in a river. Holy moly, and then you have, of course, the anchor of Sheep Rock there. All we need now is just a kick-ass sunset for that river to lead right up in there. Oh yeah. You know, <laughs> you know, after a year of not shooting a single photo, is it really like riding a bike? <laughs> we'll see. So let me show you what not to do with an S-curve. Check out this composition, man. I. Uh, I came to the top of the hill looking for a little bit better curve and yeah, she's pretty curvy, but check out what happens though in the bottom left. See how the river winds out of the frame? That's not cool because your eyes go right out. It leads right out of that frame and you want them to lock onto sheep rock, onto that, uh, onto that little knobby, that knobby mountain of ours. So we got to frame up somewhere else and See if we can close off that river somehow. Otherwise, nice comp, right? 
sort of a little bit solid composition right there. I mean, the river kind of, the river still flows out of the frame, but it's a little more focused. So that's what we're going to go with. So my only regret about having a pale sun today is we're not going to get that beautiful, rich, golden light that normally hits sheep rock. Normally, under normal circumstances, about this time of day, light at about this time of day, just before the sun goes over the horizon, it just bathes that entire mountain in just this rich golden light. And I've seen it where the light will just band across the entire land. it's just landscape. It's just magical to see. But because we have a pale sun and it's obscured, we're not gonna get the light today. That's one of those things where, you know, as a shooter, wouldn't we just like to have the power of storm from X-Men? So I have one last composition we're gonna hit, but I wanted to show you a little trick that I usually do with this. It's called a vertical panorama, but in this case, it's gonna be a horizontal panorama because here's, check, the, check out what I have here. Here's the scene, right? Look how wide that is and beautiful that is. But I'm not gonna be able to get it all in this frame. Even though this is a 17 millimeter, it's still not enough. So what I'm gonna to have to do is take this frame here and then take this frame right there. So I'm doing two frames. I'm stitching that one and that one. So I get plenty of sky and I got these nice boulders here. And these boulders are very crucial because we ran into that problem up on the hill and that the, the river was leading out of the scene. Now the boulders help to kind of stop the eye from going out of the way. And that bush on the left, I don't really care about that. That's not a big deal for me. But at least I'm gonna have the sky and the beautiful boulders right there to clean it all up. Okay, because we're in the field, here's what we're gonna do. First frame, we're gonna get the sky. That's the easy part, believe it or not, the sky. So we wanna get that in there. I fired off three shots. That's insurance, basically. I'm not bracketing at all. Um, I don't really need a bracket with this camera. So we're just gonna fire off three shots. That's insurance in post. You can do as many as you want. But I'm confident with three that I have what I have here. Um, make sure my highlights aren't blown out. Just review them. Those are blown, that's fine. But I have others that I can work with. So we just wanna make sure, once again, that we're not blowing out those highlights. One. And you can shoot as many as you want. I mean, the more power to you. All right, so now we're gonna move down to get the boulders. What we're doing is we're taking a frame for the boulders and a frame for the background. So what we're gonna do is stitch them both together in post. The critical part, what you wanna do, in the middle of the frame where the two images overlap, you wanna leave at least a third, a third, 30% in between the two frames. That way they blend perfectly in post. If you don't have that much to blend in the middle, if you don't leave at least that 30%, Photoshop and Lightroom have a difficult time putting them together. Photoshop can do it, Lightroom will not do it. So it's very critical. That's the hard part of getting a panorama is making sure your two images overlap by 30%. Make sure we review it. Review every time, especially on a Sony. Reviews really fast. The important part is to get that exposure. Overexpose. I'm gonna overexpose actually a little bit to make sure I get that detail in the boulders. There we go. So we're gonna review what we have here. We got one, and that's gonna to stitch together just nicely. I think that's going to be a pretty decent, pretty decent pan. I think about my uh, my colleagues and my buddies right now in the uh, Columbia River Gorge, and uh, the wildflowers are just exploding right now in yellow and purple. And if you've never been photographing in the 
in Oregon's Columbia River Gorge. It is neck to neck, shoulder to shoulder shooting, uh, trying to grab that perfect flower, praying there's no wind. It can be a stressful time, to say the least. Whereas out here, I've had this whole place to myself. I've been the only one out here all day. And it's places like this, these kind of off the grid, kind of secretive spots that no one really goes to um, for whatever reason, that you can revel in and make your own. And I think as a shooter, that inspires me to find these spots, make, make them as my own, make them, Make them something, make masterpieces and revel, just revel in the insane geology and the insane majesty that we've been given. The sun just went down, so we're waiting for our final bit of light to do its thing. I'm still the only one out here. Amazing, just amazing. Get out, see those hidden spots for yourself, and thanks so much for watching, everyone. Thanks for sticking with me through 2020, and I am here and loud and proud in 2020. As always, like and subscribe down below. And as always, here are the photos taken on this trip. We'll see you next time. Bye.